Is everybody else good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Gucci, Gucci. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Jersey Nerds podcast. I am not Chris. Uh, as you can see, he is busy this weekend, and uh, I'm currently joined by Beepo, and uh, Noah's back for another episode. What's going on, guys? Uh, just not Chris. How about you? Same. I'm also not Chris. Noah? I'm also not Chris. Yeah. Ah, perfect. We're all not Chris. Welcome to the Not Chris podcast. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we got a that ton to talk about. Familiar. I feel like we've made this joke before. Yeah. Are we? Are we? Are we just <laughs> recording a Chris today, or is that how the joke goes? I, th- I think that's how the joke goes. Uh, we got a ton to cover today, but uh, record. Just recording a Chris. Oh, I remember. Just recording a podcast. How about you? There we go. Uh, that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was uh, <laughs> we, uh, we got a bunch to cover today, uh, but we'll start out the episode like we have been the last couple with uh, what are you wearing. So, uh, Beepo, hit me. What do you got on today? Um, I am wearing the Minnesota Wild home jersey because I haven't entirely unpacked my jersey from school, so I kind of just picked the first one that was in my closet, and it's a really nice jersey, so I'm not complaining. It's a good choice for one that just happened to be available <laughs> when the rest of them are yeah. all packed up, so you lucked out. I think, Noah, what about you? Uh, I had like one bag with the jerseys that were hanging on the wall in my dorm, and those are the ones that are hanging in my closet now, and of course those are the yeah. ones that I like the most. So, uh, okay. I think there was like Minnesota, Carolina. Actually, Vegas might have been with those. I'm not sure. You that had Vegas available and you didn't wear it after they just won that series? Come on. I mean, I don't see it in there right now, but then again, it could just be hidden behind one of them, so I don't know. That's fair. Noah, what do you got today? Uh, today I've got Canada's 2018 Olympic jersey, just because I'm still happy they won the World Hockey Championship. There you go. I could tell it was one of those jerseys just by the neckline. Yeah. Nike. <laughs> That classic Nike, the classic Nike wide necks. <laughs> yep. Well, me, I am rocking my Vancouver Canucks reverse retro jersey. Uh, I took it off the wall and I replaced it with this guy here, my uh, Sherbrooke Phoenix game worn, just because I felt like changing it up a little bit. Game worn. Um, Who's and on the back? I, I, I don't know. Some rando that probably won't make the bigs or never did i don't know i I, when i buy the game ward major junior jerseys i don't care about who's on the back because i don't really feel like spending a ton of money to get the good guys i just want the jersey there was a penguins prospect playing for sherbrooke i can't remember if that was poulan or lake ra before they got traded i wasn't sure if it would have been one of them i don't know this one says murphy on the back but i don't know who it is um not one of them but uh yeah, no. I whenever I get the game worn major junior ones, I don't really care about who's on the back. I just kind of want the jersey. I get that one. Uh, I have a Gatineau one, but that one I bought was because it's my buddy that I used to play hockey with when he was playing for them. Uh, and then I got a Victoriaville Tigres jersey as well. Uh, that one doesn't even have a name on the back. But uh, yeah, no. Felt like changing the pace. This is like my favorite of the reverse retros I bought, and I haven't worn it more than once, so I felt like taking it off the wall for today's episode. It is a very nice reverse retro, and I see oh, I the that. Wild Wing and the Golden Knights right behind you. So yeah, I had them all hanging up on the wall. <laughs> like you, if you go back and watch last week's or last episode, it should be the Canucks one should be hanging right where the Sherbrooke one is now because I just took it off the wall. I need to change it up every so often, you know. Like I got, uh, I got Mister Ugly 25th Anniversary Ducks jersey <laughs> hanging back here. I got to take off the wall there, put something else up. I got my Belleville one hanging above it. I had the white one up there for a bit, but I put the red one up instead. I don't know. I'll change it up. I need uh, to set up like you have, so that way I don't have to like worry about cleaning my room every time we do a podcast because <laughs> it gets bad sometimes. Although I guess it keeps me motivated to keep it clean at least. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, is like with what the thing is, is like with what's here, like it doesn't even minimize the mess because my walk-in closet is literally just like all jerseys, and this is just a few of the ones. <laughs> I have like a quarter of a room downstairs taken up or taken up by my jerseys, oh, just because there's no room for it in this room. 
that I'm in. Every time, every time I open the closet, I can like feel Chelsea die inside a little bit, <laughs> just because she like wants the closet space, but she just doesn't get any. <laughs> and it was even worse when I was working at Tip Top because I had all my suit stuff taking up the other half of the closet. So literally, the whole walk-in was just my <laughs> jerseys and suits. And she's like, "You don't need all this." I'm like, "Yeah, it's, it's, you don't understand. It's important." Like, <laughs> <laughs> just get like a jersey rack to put them somewhere else. Oh yeah. I, I, like, <laughs> I could probably hang them up in here. I don't know. I'm running tight on space in here too, though, so I need to figure it out. But uh, we got a lot on the deck on deck today <laughs> on deck because we're gonna move into baseball first, uh, and we'll start off by talking about the. We've already discussed the Boston and uh, what Miami's City Connect jerseys when they when they dropped, and we've had a couple more drops since then, uh, including Chicago White Sox has dropped. Uh, Chicago Cubs has dropped, and then Arizona Diamondbacks just dropped today. Um, so why don't we start by discussing our thoughts on the new jerseys? And Noah, I know you haven't been on to talk about the past, once in the past, so if you want to talk about your thoughts overall, you know, you can do that. So we'll start with Beepo. Beepo, tell us how you feel about these uh, three new City Connect jerseys that have dropped. Okay, for the White Sox... Um... I don't entirely know how I feel about it. I think it's a nice look in general. I don't really know the entire significance of the South side. Um, I assume that's more local to where they play, considering that, you know, there's another Chicago team, which also we'll be getting to. Um, it, you know, it sticks with their, you know, normal, you know, kind of grayscale color scheme, which I think looks honestly surprisingly nice for baseball, just in general. Um, one thing that's funny is that Chris mentioned, like, I think last episode, or I think it was last episode, not the one that we didn't put out about black pants and baseball and how that should not happen. And then immediately after we record here, they come trotting this out with black pants, um, which is not the greatest look. Uh, I, I wasn't sure what to expect. It does not look that great. The black pants, but I think the Jersey itself is okay. Um, the cups are more interesting. Again, it, it, kind of strays from their normal look i really like the cap logo for you know a city connection type of thing um and the sleeve patch i think that is looking at it and just scrolling through the article um i don't really understand why it says wrigleyville they play at wrigley field right yes so is that kind of just a way of them trying to appeal to all cubs fans i guess since they can't really own Chicago as their own since there's two of teams. Is that what it is? I, I'd, I'd assume that's probably it. Just based off of the history of the club. Because I believe the articles are saying that like them and the White Sox didn't work together on this um, at all. Um, so they were trying to appeal to any fans in Chicago instead of just like you know, anybody in their half of Chicago, so to speak. So, I mean, I guess for that reason, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, it's nothing I'm absolutely in love with, but I don't think it's anything too bad. And the Diamondbacks are brand new. I only have seen these, like, I mean, we they were unveiled today. The script looks really nice. Um, is that Spanish for Diamondbacks? Serpientes? Yeah, is that what that is? Uh, I don't Maybe. think Spanish so. for something. <laughs> it's this, it's Spanish for snakes. Snakes. There it is. Okay. Um, again, this was unveiled like this was unveiled today, and I woke up about thirty minutes ago. <laughs> so this is my first time really looking at it. The red number with the black script kind of gives me Dodgers vibes. How they have you know different script and number. It's honestly a really nice look overall. I think. Mm -hmm. Just nice and clean. Um, not too much going on. The script is really to find well done. Here. The flag on the sh sleeve works really well. Kind of looks like the Coyotes now that I think of it. Although then again, they use this color scheme too. Where is it here? I found an article. Um... So one of the executives for the Cubs was explaining why they chose Wrigleyville. And I think okay. it basically just bottoms out to being a nickname for their park. 
because his explanation says uh, Lakeview is the neighborhood, but Wrigley- Wrigleyville is kind of the aura. Uh, oh, this is the chairman of the Cubs, Tom Ricketts, who said this. He's like, anyone who's sitting at a bar anywhere in the world watching baseball, watching the Cubs, is in Wrigleyville. So that's the kind of the way that they look at it. Okay. So it's just kind of like a team vibe, I guess, at the end of the day. And that's why they decided to go with that. If it's something that the fans like and it connects with them, then sure. Why not? Especially since you can't own the city of Chicago. It's purely your own. And also, I forgot to mention um, from the sleeves, I think, of the uh, dugout and bullpen jackets, it says. And then on some of the cleats, how they have just all of the neighborhoods of Chicago listed. And then their Lakeview in separate red when the rest mm-hmm. of them are in blue. I really like that. I mean, I feel like it could make it onto the uniform somewhere, like sublimated, but I, I'm glad that they included it somewhere. I really like that detail. Well, the amount of that, like, they went very simple with this uniform as a whole. So with the amount of empty space, like, they definitely could have put that, you know, I don't know, somewhere. But, uh, yeah, that would have been like, a Like, I wonder if you kind of kind of had it, like, wrapping around one of the arms or something. And again, like, sublimated, like, hurricane style. So it's not like, you know, really, it's not going to draw your eye away. Mm-hmm. But have well, it I, guess I think that would have been pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to be overbearing yeah. for sure. Uh, Noah, what are your thoughts on these ones and even the past City Connect jerseys, if you have any? Yeah, just looking at these overall, I'm honestly a pretty big fan. I've never liked how baseball jerseys are normally just white and gray. I feel like there should be more colorful options available, and these jerseys, especially the Marlins one, are really like. I really like them. I feel like the White Sox one is my favorite since I've been to Chicago in that area, and I feel like it kind of fits with the feel of Southside Chicago when I went. I also really like the pattern in between the pinstripes, kind of like a small detail that you don't notice, but it's but when you look at it, it just kind of brings the whole jersey together. I honestly prefer it to the Cubs. I don't hate the Cubs jersey, it's just it's just not as good as the White Sox one in my opinion. And looking at the Diamondbacks one for the first time, the script is really nice. I also really like the red numbers. Even if they give me Dodger vibes, it's still a good look overall. So honestly I'm I'm pretty I just happy wanna clarify that when I said Dodgers vibes I didn't mean it in a bad way. I like it. Yeah. So yeah, overall I'm a pretty big fan of these, and hopefully some more good jerseys are released. Yeah, I'd, I'd tend to agree. I think overall, like we've said in the past, it's cool to see uh, teams kind of exploring a little bit, adding, I mean, in the case of Chicago, it doesn't really count, but uh, adding a little more color and variety to their overall sets. Um, I think overall... I mean, I'll, I'll start with the Cubs. I think out of the three ones that we are, we're discussing, I think the Cubs one is kind of the most boring of the three of them, in my mind. Um, it's not in a bad way, you know. The cap is really nice. I love the C with the, the red star from the Chicago flag in it. It looks really good. Um, and the blue on blue, like, pattern, or the color palette overall is really nice. Um, just, you know... A lot of teams seem to be keeping it pretty simple, not getting too crazy. Um, those little details on the sleeves and the cleats, like people pointed out, are really nice little details. Um, that I, like I said, I think they could have taken advantage of it a little better, maybe on the jersey. But you know, uh, as of where they are now, like it's a, it's just a cool little thing. Um, the White Sox jerseys, I think, I really like the font that they used for the word mark and the numbers. Like, I think that's a cool, cool look. Uh, the gray pinstripes, I don't know. I'm neither here nor there about it. I don't really care for it. It's a little ne- neat little detail that adds a little to the jersey, but I don't think it's super necessary, I guess. Um, and then for the Diamondbacks, like, that word mark, that word mark's great. I love that. I love the word mark on the front of this. Again, they kept it simple. And, uh, you know, like in terms of a color palette, like it's cool to see them kind of use these colors instead of what they've been using. 
Um, I, I guess they they've been using these. Eh? They just changed to these because they were using like a a lot of neon colors last time I saw their jerseys. And, but uh, yeah, didn't they just change either this year or last year? I'm not sure. I, I'd I think assume it was. so. Yeah, no, they they changed they changed it back. Uh, well, they still have they still have the teal, uh, the teal brick and black logos as listed as present logos on at least on sports logos. Um, whether they're still using those uniforms they were using with them, I don't think so. It looks like they might have a couple teal details in there still, but it wasn't as overbearing as it was before. Either way. Uh, I like the collar palette. I think that word mark looks really good. You know, again, they kept it simple, but uh, it'll be nice to see what they do with the full uniform when they release that. Because so far, it's just been the cap and the jersey itself that have been shown in photos from what I've seen. Um, so yeah, it'll be cool to see. Okay, yeah. So moving forward, um, recently it dropped on the internet that there was a leak of uh, a new. New England Revolution logo. Um, the person that dropped it on Twitter also dropped the Columbus SC logo when it leaked. Uh, so that's pretty reliable source. Uh, and considering most teams in the MLS, I think the Revolution is one of the ones at the top of the list of needing a bit of a rebrand since they've had that painted brush flag logo for so long. Uh, um, what are your thoughts on that? From Pico? the Sports Logos article. It was the last remaining logo, uh, or the last remaining original logo in the MLS. So, uh, definitely go. in need of an update. Um, my first reaction yeah. upon seeing this was just finally, because they've had <laughs> that dated brush script or brush brush style logo for way too long. I don't know how it lasted nearly this long. Um, if they wanted to keep that same concept and just refine it, then fine. But, you know, it looks like the team wanted to go in a different direction. And I don't think it's too bad at all. Um, you know, it's fairly... It, it lines up with the traditional soccer logo. And while for, you know, a United or a North American-based league, you know, you'd think that they might want to go in a different direction. But no, the league's very much been going in this direction as well. And I don't really know what the significance of the pattern is or anything. Um, you know, of that inner circle thing. I think who um, somebody was thinking it might have been something to do with, like, the cap of, like, an army official from the Revolutionary War or something. Um, but either way, you know, I think it looks fine. It's nothing that wows me. It's nothing that I think is bad. I think it'll fit right in in the MLS, personally, and way better than what they've had before. Noah? Yeah, I definitely agree. Their old logo was probably the worst in the league, but this new lead one just fits the style of soccer in the MLS so much better. Even if it's a roundel, it's still pretty solid. Just the one thing I don't like is how there's like a sash through the R. I am not I don't understand the significance of that. I'd probably prefer if the R was just, like, on top of the whole thing instead of getting kind of crossed out through it. But other than that, it's solid. Not one of the best in the league, but still definitely a solid logo overall. Yeah, I think overall, uh, like Beepo said, their la last logo was getting a little outdated. Uh, it definitely I'd say more than a great. little outdated. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> it, it needed it needed a refresh um overall like you know i think this new logo is good um it definitely fits the badge style a little better when it comes to the soccer uh like style of logo so that's going to be a good fit um my biggest problem with it honestly is just i don't like the white in it um personally i think if they just took the R and like the red and blue parts in the middle and use that just as the badge itself and got rid of the white and blue circle on the outside and all the words. I think I'd like that a little better. It's a little more dynamic and I think it would look a little better as the badge. Um, 
I mean, I don't know. I, do you necessarily need to have the name of the club and the year it was founded on the logo on the shirt? No, like you can use that for marketing material and things like that. I don't think you need to have it on the kit. So I think it would look a little better if they just got rid of that white circle and all the words around it and just went with the R and the red part as the badge itself. Um, but overall, like you guys said, it's it's probably an average looking badge when it comes to the MLS overall, but it's definitely an improvement over what they've had since 1996. Now, considering this is the leak, it's honestly, honestly much possible that you know, the, you know, the team has just that inner part as a, like, option uh and possibly use it on the uniforms and then have this as like their primary logo for other use who knows but yes like uh, there's there's still a lot up in the air with it being a leak you know uh based on the past leak with the columbus sc logo like there is a small part of me that thinks this is pretty much it just because that's what they had leaked last time and obviously nobody knew that the whole Columbus crew change was going to come afterwards until the fans had a meltdown about it. Rightfully so. because The was... team didn't even know. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a, it's a, it's a good, a welcome change and one that we look forward to seeing on the kit soon, hopefully. Uh, All right, so now we'll move into... Uh, so the second ECHL expansion franchise, uh, Trois Rivier got a uh, team and they're calling themselves the Lions and they dropped their logo and a bit of a word mark uh, recently. Uh, they come after the Iowa Heartlanders dropped a couple weeks back and we talked about that. Um, but what are your first impressions of this branding overall, Beepo? Personally, I know there's like mixed reactions to this, but personally, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I really like how they were able to include several different types of imagery into that primary logo with the torch and the fleur de lis and the lion. And one interesting note, and there's one more from one of these articles, but I'll need to look for it. I don't remember what it was. Um, one interesting note from these articles is that the name, um, and these articles I'm referring to sportslogos.net and aesthetics, they both brought it up. It's a callback to the original Trois Rivières Lions team uh, that played in uh, pro Quebec hockey league and Eastern professional hockey leagues in the uh, late fifties. So that's where the name comes from, which, you know, I'm fine with them honoring history like that. I think it fits. The logo is really nice. I'm not as big on the word mark. Um, I don't mind the Trois Rivières text, um, but the Lions, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that one. There's just something about it. I don't know. Maybe it looks a little too basic to me and just adding those swooshes just for the sake of it. But yeah, for the most part, you know, really like the branding and really looking forward to what they have to bring on the jerseys. Noah? I agree for the most part. Like, it's a great idea kind of merging a line with the torch and the fleur de lis. I feel like it could have been executed just a little better, but it's still a great logo. Like, like I said, the idea is awesome, and I agree that the word mark could have could be different, especially like the eye and lions. It doesn't really fit with the less the rest of the word mark. And yeah, I like the callback to the original lions as well. It'll be cool to see if they continue to pay tribute to that with like the jerseys i'm really excited to see what the jerseys are going to be like i feel like they should be pretty good so yeah overall pretty big fan could be better but overall pretty solid i kind of hope they don't pay homage to the team when it comes to the jerseys because like looking at what they had it looks fairly basic you know like edmonton chicago style three stripes with a shoulder yoke and diagonal maybe text, feel like an alternate i hope they don't go that exact but i mean but i guess the it's very one least thing to pay homage it's one thing to pay homage versus you know i guess copy the design exactly yeah i mean i'd i like at the very least i wouldn't want them to do the new york ranger style type down the front like the thing with me about this logo is that, again, like you guys said, like I think it's a great concept, just not executed quite right. 
Um, I, I I think we had a pretty big discussion about it when it dropped in the Discord. But like overall, like it, there's just something about the logo that just seems awkward. I don't know if it's just like just the shape and like sizing of the logo. Like I don't know if a logo that's going to be this wide or how wide it looks is going to look good on the front of a jersey. To me personally, um. I feel like they have a lot of opportunity when it comes to the jersey to have a little fun with it. But, like, I look at this logo and, like, it just screams ECHL to me, which I guess is pretty much a good thing because, like, you know, it's pretty much what they're aiming for. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of cool, like, imagery in it uh, combined into the logo. I just, there's something about it that just is kind of off-putting to me overall. Um... In terms of the word mark, yeah, I don't know. Like, the Trois Rivières and the lines just don't fit together to me. Uh, like, even with the two different fonts, I just don't like the way the two of them look together. And the lines overall, like, I don't know. It just it seems awkwardly put. Like, they have extensions at the top of the L and then the bottom of the S, but not the top of the S, and then the top of the N, and then the, uh, the dot on the I is, like, just half cut off. Like, it just... It looks kind of weird and awkwardly put together, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, like I'll, I'm excited to see what they do in terms of the jerseys, because like I, I want to see what their plan is with trying to fit that logo on the front of a a jersey, because like I just feel like it's gonna be kind of awkward. I was gonna say the lions kind of looks like it, like it kind of looks like Helvetica. It actually yeah. might be Helvetica now that I look at it a little closer which i mean it's a fine typeface but i feel like it's a little basic for a sports team's word mark no i mean you're not wrong but like uh, yeah you're right but like the yeah. thing is, is like i think they kind of just half did the like all the customizations that they've done on it they just kind of half did them you know like i don't feel like the extensions yeah. on the S, the N, and the L are very balanced very well because, like, you know, there's two at the top, one at the bottom. You know, again, I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that I because that uh, it's just, like, kind of half cut out, which just kind of looks weird to me. Um, and again, like, I just I don't feel like the sans serif that is Helvetica for the Lions part versus the serif that they use for Trois Rivières just fit together very well at all. Like, they just look like two different, two completely separate things. I also found the other um, note that I had from the uh -huh. from an article. So this one's from the Aesthetics article in specific um, that the gray color is a metal gray which is a nod to uh, metalworking which is a big part of the region's history which i mean i think the gray fits into the color scheme just fine but you know mm -hmm. having a reason for it sure i'm fine with that i think it's a cool detail cool nod i can't remember who it was but when we were talking about it in the discord somebody somebody dropped the line that they're like oh it's the toronto maple leafs and it just made me think about a past episode where Beepo had this like rant he went on about how teams shouldn't be condemned because they used another team's color palette. <laughs> it's like you're going to run out of colors eventually. And I still agree with that. It's like how the Toronto Six keep getting called Ottawa Senators uh, clones. Like for one, the jerseys don't look anything like Ottawa's, not nope. the old ones nor the new ones. Uh, in fact, the they're better because the Senators do not have good jerseys at all. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen. One kick at a time, please. Sorry, sorry Hunter. Um, <laughs> and Noah, I guess. You guys are both Sens fans. Um, but, like, honestly, I'd, I'd like... it. I mean, granted, this is the 80s, but, you know, the Penguins, whenever they changed to black and gold, there was a huge fuss. And, like, there's just... Whenever teams have a unique thing to them and somebody else tries it, it's just, like... They're copying. The no, they cannot do this. But whenever twenty teams in the league have red, white, and blue, it's fine. I don't understand the kind of mentality there. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there has to be a bit of a boundary. But you're right. Like, you know, I think comparing these guys to Toronto is ridiculous because they're like two leagues lower than Toronto. Like, who cares? It's blue yeah, and white. And gray. Like, like, it's not. You know, is blue and white that unique of a color scheme? Yeah, really? Like, Tampa and Toronto are in the same league. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah, and they even have really. remotely close jerseys, and people complain about that enough. Like, come on. Um, also, uh, I threw it into um, Affinity Designer, and I'm 95% certain that is Helvetica. The S is a little bit off, but I don't know if that's just like the way that I have it sized right now. But yeah. it's very close regardless. So, the other thing is, the it's funny that, that you... Uh, it's funny that you brought up the T6, too, because I, I always hear people make that argument of how, how they look like the Sens, and I always laugh. I'm like, isn't that, like, the perfect thing to do, though? Because they're in a city that's predominantly blue and white color schemes everywhere, and they're going to be the one or two teams that don't use that. Like, this is the big problem that Ottawa sports teams run into, is we're all red and black, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, we in need... Pittsburgh here, we're all black and gold, but I, I mean, I guess black and gold is a more unique color scheme than red and black, so maybe it's not as much of a yeah. problem there. I've always really liked that about Pittsburgh, how I mean, every team. I'll here give credit color to scheme. I'll give credit to some of the Ottawa teams because they use it in unique ways. Like the sixty sevens rock that barber pole, and like you know, not a lot of teams in any league really use that kind of look. And you know, I wish the Sens would bring it back, but that's a topic for another day. Um, you know, the Sens have used those colors for long enough now that it's kind of just part of their brand, so I wouldn't really see that changing. The Red Blacks, when they came back, like, the name's bad enough, you know? <laughs> I didn't need I didn't need them to go red and black, too, you know? Like, I think they could have had a little more fun with it, but they just didn't. They did um, have Pittsburgh plaid black jerseys. Gold. Yeah. They did have plaid jerseys, and I'll give them credit for that, because those were kind of cool, but, like... I, I, I don't know. It's cool to see them kind of embrace that whole lumberjack motif that they've been going, which is kind of keeping them unique. But like even uh, the new Canadian Basketball League, like the Ottawa Blackjacks, red and black, you know, Atletico Ottawa, uh, they don't use red and black, but that's only because they're copying Atletico's colors. So like, it's just, it's one big thing after yeah. the other. So, like, you know. But, it's another uh, side topic, but I also love how with the Toronto Six, everybody's like, you look like the Ottawa Senators, and, and not like nobody mentions the Raptors at all when they're in the same right? city and <laughs> arguably the exact same yeah. color scheme, minus the purple, which has only come back in recent years anyways, like this year. And the thing I guess is too, technically the, the last, I think it was last year, the year before with the throwback jersey, but either way, like that's the, that was the throwback jersey. It's mainly red, black, and white with a little bit of gold in there for the alternates. Yeah. So. The other thing is, is yeah. that I would argue that T the T6 are leverage their color palette a lot better than the Sens do. Like, I've always wanted Ottawa to bring more gold into their jerseys, and they just refuse to do it. At least the T6 have, you know, a good amount of gold in all three of their jerseys. <laughs> That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, even then, like, you know, Reebok Edge, you have the Senators in red and with black and white. And now you have them in black with red and a little bit of white, depending on the jersey. And yep. they have no gold pretty much anywhere but the logo and the T6 have it there. I, I don't understand this thing at all. I feel like it's... Well, for one, it's probably innocent people complaining uh, that don't know a lot about jerseys and just kind of look at the base level of it. And for two, it could just be people complaining about women's hockey and finding anything to grasp at. So I don't, I don't know. Also it's fair. probably a combination of those two, so... Who knows? All right. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. All right. Well, so if you haven't uh, if you haven't joined our Discord yet, uh, what are you doing? You should have joined by now. But also, on top of that, we've been doing a Stanley Cup playoffs bracket. And uh, we're going to do a little rundown on our personal brackets and see how we've been doing so far with the NHL playoffs in full effect. Spoiler uh, Beepo. alert, not good. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, it's not good for really anybody. Beepo, nope. uh, how is your, uh, how's, how's your, uh, how's your bracket going? I know it's going very badly, and as I navigate to my bracket and sign in and everything, I've just got to say, I don't know if I've said it on the podcast before, when the Islanders beat the Penguins, they would not have beaten them if we had league average goaltending. So I was expecting them to get stomped by the Bruins. And somehow they won. And I don't know. Granted, I'll admit I didn't watch much of the series. But like, did the Bruins just forget how to play hockey? I don't know what happened. But that surprised me uh, significantly. And now they're in the conference final with Tampa again, as we all predicted. Um, yeah, my final four, um, one for four. I had Toronto, Pittsburgh, Carolina, and Vegas. <laughs> so, 
uh, I'll admit some bias on Pittsburgh and Toronto, but honestly, uh, I thought they both could do it for sure. Um, and I still think the Penguins could have if they had better goaltending in the playoffs. Toronto, I, I don't even know, man. <laughs> like, can what what can you say at this point aside from are they like legitimately just cursed? Like, what what else did you want that team to do? You know. Like Win. they had just about everything that, yeah, really, they had just about <laughs> everything this year. They had the top line. They had they had top end talent. They had deep. They had a deep forward core. They had good defense. They had good goaltending. Yeah. It was just the top end scoring didn't show up in the playoffs, and they collapsed. Um, and and as we all predicted, Montreal ended up coming out of the north, um, as as we all thought. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised that Tampa came out of the central. I mean, I feel like you could have picked Carolina, Tampa, and maybe even Florida and w- had a case for it. Um, same with Colorado or Vegas coming, or even Minnesota coming out of the West. Um, I feel like you could have picked any of those three and had a case for it. I thought I picked Colorado to be honest, but I guess it worked out that I picked Vegas. And then, yeah, the Island just come out of the East as well, which I would have expected it to be pens of the Bruins, but Hey, I, I guess I should stop doubting the Islanders at some point, huh? <laughs> Apparently what they're doing works, which kind of sucks because I don't want to go get into the dead puck era number two. I really don't. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty rough for everybody. Noah, how's uh, how's your bracket going, buddy? I don't actually... I, I'm actually logged out of my NHL account, so I can't see it right now, but I'm pretty sure I had Edmonton over Florida or Florida over Edmonton in the final... And they both lost in the first round, which is great. I did have the Habs beating the Leafs, though, which is pretty fun. What's uh, what what was the name of your bracket? I want to see if I can open it. I think it's just Noah is the. Oh, it's got your name in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I can see it here. <laughs> uh, so, from what I can see, none of none of your final four made it out. Uh, you had Edmonton, That's Boston, great. Minnesota, and Florida. Three of those teams lost in the first round. That's great. <laughs> you were uh, you picked the right. <laughs> yeah. My cup final was Toronto Pittsburgh, so both of my finalists lost in round one too. <laughs> On the plus side, though, you had at least one right uh, winner from each division, which is more than I could say That's about good. my bracket. Because you picked Montreal over Toronto. That's a good choice. Colorado over St. Louis. That was a good choice. Islanders over Pittsburgh, and then Carolina. You actually got the winner and the amount of games right. And then everything wow. else from there kind of went downhill. Oh, you had Boston yeah. over Washington, too. Okay, so not bad. I think the funniest thing about my bracket... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's good. We're good. Um, I think the funniest thing about my bracket, if you backtrack around and just pretend it's the beginning of round two. I had the North and the East entirely wrong. I had Toronto and Edmonton, both of them lost. Pittsburgh and Washington, which part of me was just, I wanted to will that matchup into existence again, but both of them <laughs> lost. Um, but then I had the West and the Central perfect. I had Colorado Vegas, Carolina Tampa. So really weird how it was so hit or miss there. And I think I got Vegas in seven and Tampa in six in the first round, both correct. And then obviously everything else was wrong because I didn't even get half of them wrong. But I mean, you know, I had Colorado in five, which was close and Carolina and four, which yeah, that didn't work out. Nashville won a couple games. So <laughs> yeah, overall, I think my best division was probably the West and my worst was definitely the North. Cause I don't have any of my final four in. Uh, I had the Boston series perfect. I had Boston in five, and I had the Carolina series perfect. I had Carolina in six over Nashville. But then after that, everything else just went downhill because <laughs> I had Florida beating Tampa, and that didn't happen. And then I had Florida beating Carolina, and that didn't happen. Um, the West Division bracket would have been a lot better if Colorado didn't face plant at the finish line against Vegas. Uh, cause I had them going all the way to the final four and I had Colorado and Vegas in round two and that just didn't work out in my favor. Um, Colorado inter- took that two nothing series lead on Vegas and I was like, press F to pairs Vex to Vegas. Uh, I mean, they're not done, but like 
Colorado's going to make it very hard to claw back from that. And then yeah. they just won four straight. Like, oh, okay. oh just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a weird series overall. Uh, and then my North Division is just a mess. Like, my Inner Sense fans screaming because I picked Toronto over Montreal because I absolutely assumed that Toronto was just going to ragdoll Montreal. But I guess that is. They almost the... did. <laughs> it's almost, weird if they, almost doesn't help me win my bracket you know, know. <laughs> if they won if they literally just like won game five it would like literally i so i had montreal had uh, chances. i had toronto in six for that series and i went home uh to watch game six at my parents place my dad's a big leafs fan and i'm literally telling them when they went into overtime i'm like i need them to win this game because I just want to be right on my bracket. That's it. I'm like, once they get around two, I want them to get stomped by whoever they're playing. I'm like, I don't care. That's all I care about. And then, of course, later on in the overtime, because Toronto was just demolishing Montreal in the overtime, I was like, you know what? I'm like, I bet you this game just ends. Montreal just gets one good chance, and they yep. score, and the game's over. And he's like, why would you say happened. that? Literally seconds later, they score. And I'm like, yeah. Travis see? Dermott with the spinorama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm all pretty right, sure the shots okay. were thirteen to two in that overtime. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my my whole North Division bracket's just a mess because I had Toronto and Edmonton in round two, and yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> uh, my East Division bracket wasn't bad. I had the Boston series pretty much nailed down, but I had Pittsburgh over the Islanders, and of course, who was expecting that? Uh, and then I had Pittsburgh go over Boston, but of course, since Pittsburgh didn't make round two, it was Islanders, and they just ragdolled Boston for some reason. I don't know what the hell happened, but the Bruins between round one and round two, but they just forgot what hockey is, I guess. I mean, I guess, I guess you got correct that the winner of the Penns Islanders series beat Boston. <laughs> I guess yes. you got that part right. I was I was right for that, <laughs> but it doesn't really count if I got that wrong in the first place, right? <laughs> I guess I got correct that the winner of the Penguins Islanders series would beat the winner of the Penguin or the uh, Bruins and Capitals series, even though I got both of the teams wrong there. <laughs> yeah, does that count for something? Do I get like a? We'll a take we'll take the point? pity points. <laughs> pity points. So I'm just looking here. Um, out of all the brackets that are left in the league for the rest of it, everybody that's seventh place or lower has pretty much run their course. They can't get any more points. And this is Jersey Nerds League, right? This is the Jersey Nerds Bracket League, yes. Uh, Mask Wary Kapanen is sitting in third place, but he's also <laughs> stuck at 75 points because he won't get any higher. So he's going to get passed <laughs> over. Just making a bracket, I'm assuming that's you, Beepo. You're sitting in fourth. Is that you? Yeah. Where am I at? You're sitting at fourth, but you can't get any more points. I was going to say, how is that physically possible, considering that I've gotten... So much wrong. <laughs> so well, I guess the two I mean half the my two... bracket was right going into round two. So and I mean basically I at the heading into the finals, uh, there's only four teams that can still collect points. Uh, that's Chris in his California bracket. Uh, he has 68, but he has a possible total of 218. That's pretty uh, good. There's Bracket SC, who's Bracket SC is sitting in first place, who has 119 total points. But he can only have a total possible point total of 169. Uh, they also picked Carolina as their cup pick, so that's a little mm -hmm. uh, surprising. Uh, Ting Tingus Pingus Power is tied with Beepo and Chris for fourth place. Uh, they have 71 points, so the same as Beepo, but they have a total possible points of 221. And then the highest total possible points left is Disaster Class 2021 with 78 points currently, but 228 total. Pretty good. Just for comparison's sake, by looking at their bracket, they only have one person in the final four. But they still have a ton of points available because <laughs> they have one person that could... I think they picked Vegas to win the cup, that's why. Yeah, they had Vegas over Edmonton. Yeah. So uh, instead of Vegas over Montreal, they had Vegas over Edmonton and then Vegas over Carolina in the final. Um, so, yeah, they still have a chance at a ton of points. I mean, I guess this makes sense because, like, if you're being honest with yourself, at the beginning of the playoffs, 
if you had Colorado, or sorry, not Colorado, if you had Montreal coming out of the North Division, you're either a completely biased fan who just did that because you want it to happen, or you're a liar. You didn't think they were going <laughs> to come out liar. of the division. You <laughs> didn't think. If you're telling me you thought you actually thought Montreal was going to win that division, then you're lying because I I don't know if anybody <laughs> did for real. Like I, you know, I've done this. Before. I think I, As a I personally fan, like, thought. Like you know, I personally one. thought Montreal had as much a chance of winning the North Division as the Sens did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, like you know, I've done it before. You know, in years when the Penguins certainly weren't contenders, where I just put them as my Cup champion because I don't really want to, you know, go against them because I don't want to be cheering for them to lose if for my bracket yeah. sake. Um, if you did that, that's one thing. But actually, legitimately thinking they're going to make it out, come on, nobody did. No, I feel like hell. It's I'd, ar- I'd like argue the that the Islanders, Islanders well. are probably yeah. yeah, exactly. They're pretty like, much in the same yeah. spot, but like, I think they had a better chance than Montreal did. Like, you know, it's less surprising to me that they made it out like a little bit. Like, they got past Pittsburgh and Boston. Weird, but also like you know they made it to the conference final last year. They didn't come in 18th place in the league this year and 24th in the league last year. Yes. So which I mean, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not the trying Islanders to are, Montreal. Like they're they're where they are, and props to them for doing it. But you know, the Islanders are a weird case because I feel like they get a lot of flack or a lot of uh, like people don't believe that they'll get far because they're such a defensive team, which makes them kind of boring. But like people always forget, like they have one of the most electrifying offensive players with Barzell, you know, like and Barry Trotz is an amazing coach. So like. It's just one of those things like that personally, like I picked Pittsburgh over them because I thought, you know, Crosby and Malkin would be enough to just get them past them. <laughs> you know? I mean, but again, are. The, the Penguins were had a good series. It was just Tristan Jari that did not do great at all and had yeah. one of the worst goaltending performances. I think it was the worst goaltending performance in the playoffs since 2014, if I remember correctly. Um and one of the worst Penguins goaltending performances in the past, you know, 10, 15 years. Yeah. I think the funniest thing, uh, yeah. I don't remember who posted it, but there was a graphic with like, you know, the Penguins goaltending numbers from the past, you know, 10, 15 years. The number one one was Flurry in 2008 when they lost in the cup final. And I think it was only a spot or two above Jari this year with Flurry in 2009 when they won, which was really wow. interesting to me. So. Yeah, that is. Now, yeah. okay, just as a quick exercise, if you could go back, or not if you could go back, if you were making your bracket today and you knew who the final four teams were going to be, how would you lay out your bracket from the final four now? Like, who's going to beat who? Who's going to be in the cup final? Who's your cup pick? I feel like an easier way to ask that question would have just been, what's your picks from here on out? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you What's made your that picks, one more Beepo? Just answer the damn question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go Vegas um, because honestly, that Vegas Colorado series was very well the Stanley Cup final. I, whoever came out of there very well, you know, could have won the cup. But I'm also gonna say Tampa, just because I think they've got weight. Like, I mean, they're like 20 million over the salary cap legally. I mean, they. You know, they're just doing what any team should do if they can do it. Um, and should that be fixed? Yes, but they did it legally. So, you know, fine. That's half the game at this point, cap circumvention. Um, so they're going to have a tough time against Tampa for sure. Vegas would. Um, and I, I do think Tampa's going to make it out because, you know, as good as the, I feel like I might regret, um, you know, doubting the Islanders again, but. Tampa's just so overpowered again. Um, They've got the playoff experience this time. Um, You know, they did it last year. Um, And I think a Vegas and Tampa final would be exciting to watch. The pure chaos final would be Montreal Islanders, no doubt. But (laughs) (laughs) that would be something. Um, But yeah, I mean, I feel like there's two obvious picks and then two just like, how did you get here in the first place? I mean, I I guess fine. You made it to the final somehow already. You already made it there. So why not? So I'm going to go Vegas, Tampa. I feel like it's hard to bet against them, but yeah, feels like the obvious picks, but I don't really have any reason to pick the other two. So 
Noah, is that how your picks line up? Yeah, basically the same thing. I don't really see how Vegas or Tampa can be stopped this round. And I feel like Tampa's going to just edge out Vegas in the finals. And people will be very angry at that. Yeah. I Yeah. Personally, like I don't see I don't see any way Tampa wins a cup this year and people don't complain about the whole cap circumvention thing even more than I they mean, ha- already have. I mean, you should. Been. Like don't complain about Tampa doing it. They're doing it's legal to do it and they're doing what makes their team better. If your team did it, you'd be fine with it. Complain that it was possible in the first place. Just to clarify. Yeah. Um the big thing for me and it hurts every fiber of my being to say this, but uh Montreal is going into the finals with one of the hottest goaltending streaks I've ever seen Carey Price ever have. <laughs> In a while, at least. Uh, so, I don't know. I I want to say it's an easy pick and just be like, yeah, no, Vegas is going to just demolish Montreal. But, like, goaltending is voodoo, and it's always the big thing when it comes to the playoffs. For every Tristan Jari, there's... Uh, you know, a uh, Carey Price or a, a hot Andre Vasilevsky or something like that, you know? So I want to yeah. say Montreal has a chance. I don't know if they beat Vegas. I think I'd still pick Vegas, but I don't think it's as an easy win as a lot of people are probably going to put it. I mean, um, I, I feel like it's somewhat safe to say they've all made it here. They all have a chance, but... Absolutely. You know, that's that's playoff hockey, right? I know I said it's an obvious pick, but I mean, hey, I didn't think any of them were going to get here, or the I didn't think the <laughs> Islanders or the Canadians were going to get here anyway. So what do I? They know? weren't my four, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think I think I'd pick Vegas over Montreal. Uh, I think it's a lot tighter than a lot of people are going to have it, though. Um, in terms of Tampa Islanders, like I just I just I don't see how Tampa doesn't win this series unless you know something something happens. Like, you know, Kucherov goes down again. Vasilevsky gets ice cold. Something's got to happen to me for me to think that Tampa blows this in any way, shape, or form. Also, like, I got to say, props to Tampa in general. Because if you start at 2015, you've got Cup Final, Conference Final, and I believe they missed the playoffs in 2017, right? Wasn't like Stamkos out or something for like the whole year. Either way, I, if you ignore what I, happened that year, so. um, then you've got 2018. Wasn't that conference final again? 2019 was the first round, and then 2020 they win the cup, and now they're back in the conference final. Like what? That's what two cup final or two cup final appearances, and at least three or or at least another one or two conference final appearances in the past like six years. That's pretty yeah. good. So since 2013-14, yeah. they've made the playoffs every year except for that 16-17 year where they didn't qualify because of Stamkos and other things, I'm sure. Um, they made the cup final in 14-15, and they lost to Chicago. They made the conference final in 15-16, and they lost to Pittsburgh. They didn't make the playoffs in 16-17, they made the conference final in 17-18, and they lost to Washington. That's they lost right, Washington. the first round. They lost to the first round to Columbus and got <laughs> swept in 18-19, which is a bit of an outlier and shocked everybody. Um, and then they won Just the cup bit. last year, and they're in the semifinals this year. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Burkus is going to love hearing about Columbus winning a playoff series, since it's only happened once in their lo- existence. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't watch Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't know if you guys have heard that. There is a gigantic just thunder clap. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah? scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. Hmm. We were talking about oh, the lightning, God. and now they're coming. They're no, coming for you. Yeah, really. I'm, hey, I predicted you guys to win. What are you doing? Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't predict you guys to get Literal past lightning Carolina before, but shh, we don't need to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps up mm-hmm. all the playoff talk. Beepo, you said you had a new segment you wanted to hit us with? 
I do. Um, so I will fully admit that I have stolen this directly from a YouTube channel. Um, How dare you? If any of you guys are familiar with uh, Hivemind TV on YouTube, or I think their channel is just Hivemind, you'll certainly be familiar with this. And the segment is Take One, Leave One. So I'm going to give you guys two different things. Uh, could be jersey related, could be hockey related, could not be. Um, I think most, if not all of the ones um, this episode are going to be hockey or jersey related. Um, but basically, you pick one, you get to keep it, it stays around. The other one, banished from existence. Banished from, you know, it, it never happened. So Never happening again. Um, I'm going to start off, we're going to do, I don't know how many we're going to do. Um, we're about an hour into the recording, so we'll see. Um, going to start off with what, I mean, I suppose it's kind of a basic, you know, 90s jersey conversation, but I feel like there's some good and bad to each of these jerseys. So, Wild Wing and Burger King. Take one, leave one. Ooh. 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 That's a Burger good King one. for me, I think. I, I, I think, I think my choice for the Burger King over Wild Wing, I think for me, I'd go Burger King just based on the fact that between the two of them, I feel like as out of the box as both of them were, I think the Burger King would be more successful as an actual jersey still, whereas the Wild Wing, like, that's a 90s jersey <laughs> that stays in the 90s. You know, the Burger King, it's simple. It's simpler than the Wild Wing, so I feel, feel like it could have a little more success. Um, plus, I just like the Burger King more anyway, so like that's just me. I'd probably have to go Burger King as well. It's just like a nicer jersey, and it doesn't have a cartoon animal flying through the front of the jersey. I've never liked that about the Wild Wing. Like, even if people have nostalgia about it, I've just never liked that idea. So I would probably just take the Burger King, honestly, and banish the Wild Wing. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of surprised. I was expect I'm going with the Wild Wing. I thought you guys were going to as well, because I'm pretty sure we've had this conversation on the podcast before, where if you take off the kind of script font and the Wild Wing, like the, you know, cartoon on the front, you've got the basis for a fine jersey there with the, you know, shoulder yoke pattern and the striping. So um, that's my reasoning, and that's why I'm going to take the Wild Wing on this one. Um I'm not going to lie, I was fully expecting you guys to think that same way because I thought we had the See, conversation. But hey, I guess that's me, the beauty of this, huh? For me, the thing is, is like I'm not thinking about things that I, I'd have to remove. I'm just thinking about the two of that's them straight true. up. Like, how would they translate today? You know, like, even still, like, both of those jerseys could probably look good today if they had some adjustments. You know, like, obviously the gradients don't work as much and, like, the weird placement of the crest doesn't really work on the burger king but like you know with some adjustments i'm sure it could look a lot better the wild wing same thing if they just took the wild wing off the front and changed the font like it's already a pretty decent jersey so yeah i guess that's true if you take the burger king and just make some adjustments you yeah. kind of got similar to like the sash design of like you know uh detroit stadium series so i guess that one's not as far off as i thought it was either but i don't know i guess i'll still i'll go wild wing already just because i said that um any other comments? All right, next one. So we're going to go for, I don't know. I honestly, like looking back at this, this might be more tilted than I originally thought, but I guess we'll go for it anyways. We've got a lot of black versus a lot of white. Tampa's alternate versus Dallas reverse retro. Take one, leave one. Ooh. Ooh. I got to go, I, I think I got to go all black. And I was wrong again. <laughs> okay, so this is my thought process when it comes to this. They're both bad, don't get me wrong. They're yeah. they're both just bad. But the thing is, <laughs> yeah. is like, so you guys remember when, um, when Toronto wore like the white pants for the stadium series with their white jersey and everything? They had like yeah, yeah. it was the it was the navy game and they had yeah. like just the two blue stripes and then everything else was pretty much just white. So yeah. a lot of people a lot of people complained about those jerseys because they kind of blend into the ice. And I'm thinking the same thing here. Um, as boring as an all black jersey is, it stands out against the ice a lot better than an all white uniform would or does. 
So I feel like I'd be leaning towards all black just for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's really a right choice, but I'd have to go with all black just because I think it would look a little better on the ice than in the all white uniforms do. I have to go Tampa as well. It's mainly with the pants. I can't stand white pants in any form. And at least Tampa's jersey is boring, but it, it still like stands out against the ice. Like You can still see it compared to a Dallas jersey where it kind of just looks like it's a floating star. Sort of. Yeah. So I'll go with Tampa as well. You can barely see the star because it's basically the same color. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit you guys raised some very good points that I hadn't thought of. Um, and again, <laughs> I thought we all, you know, hated Tampa Bay's alternate. Thought it was the worst thing to ever. It, you know, it, the worst any it is bad. Ever happen? Yeah, it is yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> like, so I thought that everybody was going to pick Dallas for his retro for a second. Um, I'm glad I was proven wrong again because it makes the segment a little more interesting. As much as I agree with you guys with the contrast on the ice. Um, I'm going to have to go Dallas or Ruth Retro just because I hate the Tampa one so much. Um, <laughs> and like, even though there's still not a lot going on, you've still got, you know, the numbers that contrast quite a bit. You've got the, the very thin stripe that contrasts quite a bit. Um, and I honestly do think you have a fine jersey if you just make the pants green or something. <laughs> yeah, but, admittedly, the, the Dallas jersey is like, there's a lot of like fine tuning that they could have done to make them a lot better. You know, the silver yeah. star on the white jersey is just a bad choice from the get go. Different colored pants to break it up would be good. But honestly, uh, like looking at this picture yeah. that basically just shows like the waist down. I mean, I guess with the way that the dude's kind of bent over, it's kind of like shoulder down, but mostly waist down. Um, you, the sock striping looks really nice. And if you put that through the rest of the jersey, I think you've got something there. Um, you know, thicker, but I, I think it's just my anti-black jersey bias on this one. To be honest with you, like, <laughs> I just—it's too. I can't get over that. <laughs> it's shining through. All right, so I've got, so next one. I've got a special. Uh, this one's a. This one was written with a friend of the show, Burke Circus, in mind. Uh, Matt Matthew Burke Cirque Studio. So, Berkus Columbus Berkus Blue FC? Jackets. Purchase Columbus Blue Jackets in blue or Columbus Blue Jackets in red? Take one, leave one. Personally, I think Ooh. I'm going to have to go for the Blue Jackets in red because like, Ooh. you hear the name Blue Jackets, right? And you think they're going to be wearing blue jerseys. Then you watch a, you turn on a game, you see them in red. Whoa, that really threw me for a loop. They really bamboozled me. It's just, they, they, they do something unique there, you know? It, it catches you off guard. Um, so I'm going to have to go with the Blue Jackets in red on this one. <laughs> oh man uh i i i don't see how like, for the memes i'm gonna pick red just because i know burkus is gonna have a fit when he hears this uh and because at the end of the day uh i liked the way their reverse retro was laid out a lot better than i like their current home and away jerseys <laughs> <laughs> like sure swap the red to be blue change the shoulder yoke to be red i don't care i just i like the way the reverse retro looked a lot more than their home and away jerseys because their home and away jerseys are boring af but uh yeah I, I, <laughs> I, I, on a serious note like blue jackets and blue I, I i understand their whole argument about it needing to be uh matching up but i don't feel like that argument applies to alternates and specialty jerseys so i don't i don't understand like why it was a big deal when it comes to the alternates and stuff if it was something like you know could you imagine like the red wings and their primary jersey was like green it was like yeah okay <laughs> that's weird you know <laughs> like or the blue jackets and their primary jerseys red like i'm not saying make the reverse retro their primary because it belongs as an alternate that's it but yeah blue jackets and blue I kind of just want to say what do you red because I kind of want to say red just because it would be funny for like a person just getting into the NHL. You're like, oh, these are the Blue Jackets and they wear red. And that person just like loses their mind. That would be really <laughs> funny. 
<laughs> but I can't see them in like I mean like if I'm I giving oh, I can't sorry, see them ahead. in any co- color besides blue. I can't see them in any color besides blue in real life though. But just for the memes I want to see them in red. I mean, yeah, if I'm if I'm giving an actual theory, if the answer now, um, the blue jacket should, of course, wear blue at home, um, whether it be navy or royal, preferably royal. Um, but I've said it before, I have no issue with them using a red jersey for an alternate or a specialty like the reverse retro. Um, so I'm gonna I'll go blue jackets and blue as a serious answer. Um, but again, I I see no issue with them wearing red for specialty occasions. Um, Let's go, we'll go two more for this episode because we're running, you know, a little over an hour now. This one's a bit more broad. Home jerseys or road jerseys? Take one, leave one. Home could jerseys. be this year only. Could be historically. Doesn't or we could even you could even go dark or white if you want to, you know, go to his, or go very, historically. So home jer- it's it, it's it's home jerseys. It's it's the dark yeah. jerseys. For me, anyway, I don't know. I, I feel like I there's a there's a, there's a whole thought process behind this, and I know that for me personally, I've always liked the home jerseys because I fall into the whole marketing scheme that they want me to fall into, wherein like you like the color jerseys because those are the ones they wear when they're at home and when you're cheering with them at home. So like you know, I've always liked the dark color jerseys. There are a couple away jerseys that I think are really nice and I would like to have but like when I look at a team's uniform set they're more of a second thought to me when it comes to their uniform set because I'm always focused on their home jersey and their alternates if they have one so for me like it's always the color jerseys uh the white ones like some of them are cool but I never really have a I never have a tendency to go for the white jerseys for some reason I got to go home as well, because, like, I said this earlier in the show about the City Connect jerseys. I just like it when teams bring more colors into their branding compared to just, like, a mainly white jersey. Like, they have actual colors, like blue, red, green, whatever. It's kind of nice just seeing teams use those colors to make a good brand or a bad one. But I'll go with home here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to agree with you guys on that one for sure i mean while there's some um, there's not too many ro- uh teams in the league where i'd say that their road jersey is better than their home jersey um and that's I, i'd say that probably goes historically and just in general again i love the different colors and i'm very much a proponent of dark at home because i think you should rep your team's colors at home instead of having everybody else rep their colors in your arena um but that, that part, I guess, isn't really relevant. But I'm 100% going to say dark jerseys because while, you know, it sucked to lose out on some jerseys like the Rangers white or the Penguins white, um, you know, just as a couple examples, you know, the dark okay. jerseys, I'd say overall are, you know, a nice splash of color and just overall, I think, more well-designed for the most part. As a quick uh, as a quick little side topic, just while we're talking about it, I guess, um, I do want to know, If you had to pick two white jerseys out of every team, like the kits that everybody wore this past season, which two white jerseys would you buy? Should I pretend that I don't own any of them yet? Uh, (laughs) I mean, for the sake of having fun, I'd say yes, because I know that you're going to be like Pittsburgh. But I already own own the Penguins one. Um, So, I mean, that one's definitely in there. Uh, both for design quality as well as bias, because I love that jersey. I, and I, I'm I'm talking any I'm talking any white jersey though, like not just a ways like uh, reverse okay. retros, alternates okay. if they have it, you know, things like that. Okay. Ooh, just spitballing a couple mm-hmm. contenders for me. This Pittsburgh, of course, Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton, I think, are my top contenders. And if yeah, we're going I've, design, Philly's in yeah. there as well. As much as I hate it, but. If we're just going design, honestly, Carolina too. I really like Carolina's road. For me, it's uh, a lot more than other people do. For me, it's Buffalo, Ooh, Edmonton's man, reverse do, retro, ooh, man. Vancouver, ooh. and uh, 
where was it? Uh, Dallas. Minnesota's reverse retro has got to be in there yeah. for me too. Oh my yeah. god, this is tough. <laughs> I'd go with Oilers main away or the wild reverse retro. Probably. Or maybe Vegas is away as well. My Man, two there are a lot of good white jerseys here. Um, my, my two are easily Buffalo and Edmonton's reverse retro, but like Vancouver's has to be up there. You know, Florida probably is deserves a, to be up there, but I like their I like their home jersey better. If this is just a this year question, I'm going Edmonton and Minnesota, both their reverse retros, because they're not going to be available for as long as the primary ones would be. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're just going in general, though, if we're ignoring that aspect, I'm also going to throw Pittsburgh out because I already have it, and it's probably a bit more fun if I pick two uh, different teams. I think I might have to go Buffalo and Vancouver, honestly. Like, I've wanted the Vancouver one for a while, and I have the home, but I don't have the away yet. And Buffalo's is just so good. I have a Vancouver jersey, and I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> I think I think it's the home one, though. I bought them when they went on sale because they had just removed the Vancouver, the Vancouver mark above it. I thought but... you were making a joke because you're wearing the reverse retro right now. No, 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 no. That'd be funny, though. <laughs> I have a Vancouver jersey. I can't remember what color it is, he says, as he wears oh, okay. it. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the home um, with the Vancouver arched above. I, I'm pretty sure it was after they made the change, just because it was I probably on eBay and cheaper. So Yeah. Can't tell you the last time that I bought a full-price jersey, to be honest with you. Oh. The closest I've come is recently... Um, fellow jersey nerd and i justin probably about a month ago by now um the predators were having a buy one get one deal on their reverse retro so we each ba- we bought one and basically split the cost of it so he got his and mine's gonna be shipped to me pretty soon so yeah i've been i've been keeping an eye on what reverse retros are left and i'm sitting here like twitching because i want to buy ones but <laughs> like i just can't freaking i'm like i, I shouldn't but I, I want to. I'm like, if I don't get them, I won't be able to get them at all. You know? <laughs> Just with some yeah. of the other things that I have been buying, like, that are going towards, like, you know, my computer setup for work, you know, design work like, as I move into the professional world. Like, it's hard to justify buying a jersey instead of that, you know? Things that'll last me much longer. I mean, I guess that this won't last, or not that these won't last a while, but things that'll be... V- significantly more useful to me for a long time you yeah. know it's hard to justify spending three hundred dollars on a jersey instead of that you know considering it's just a replica quality more or less i know they're indo authentics i've said this before they're replica quality let's not kid ourselves uh noah did you make your picks for the two white jerseys yeah i said edmonton's away or minnesota's reverse retro Oh, with that's Vegas as like an honorable mention. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, I forgot you kind of ended up going first in there because Hunter and I were thinking too hard. <laughs> 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 so we'll go one more, uh, take one or leave one for this episode. Um, and I'll say it now and I'll probably say it again. If you have any suggestions for us, um, feel free to tweet them at us or DM it to us on Instagram, leave it in the comments, or even better, because we'll be more likely to see it that way, join our Discord and throw it in there. Um, For now, I guess we can just throw it in the mailbag questions uh, channel. Um, If you're listening and already a member of the Discord, just throw it in there, and we'll add them to a list, and you know, eventually we'll hopefully get to them all. Um, So last one for this episode. Apologies in advance if either you guys are vegetarian. Burgers or hot dogs? Disgusting meat? Ew. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, this is a this is a tough one for me because uh, since since Ottawa's so close to Quebec, like we got some pretty bomb ass poutine and hot dog places up here, and <laughs> like I, I oh, man. I think I think I'd have to go burgers because personally I just like burgers more. I tend to order them more often. But man, like, 
don't sleep on hot dogs, guys. Because oh man, because some yeah. of them can be really good. I'm also more of a burger guy, but like a hot dog is is like good as well. But throughout my life, I've probably been more of a burger guy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. I mean, hot dogs are good. Like a, a good hot dog is really good. Um, but uh, I think burgers are honestly my favorite food in general. Um, I noticed, you know, uh, I think it was around 2018 whenever I started dating, and we, you know, we're going out to a bunch of different restaurants. Um, I would pretty much always go for the burgers that they had, just because that always sounded the most appealing to me. And I kind of realized, like, I think this might be my favorite food. Um, and a lot of times still, if I, you know, go out to a new restaurant, I always like to try the burgers that they have. Um, it, I just, it, they're so good. Um, so a good hot dog is still really good, but I'm going to have to go burger too. Um, especially, you know, a good homemade burger, or, you know, something from a restaurant, especially I mean, if you, if you want to throw in McDonald's burgers or whatever, like eh, at that point, that kind of quality, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, that's it for the segment. Like I said, if you got any ideas, submit them to us on uh, on our Twitter, on our Instagram, on our Discord, wherever you can get a hold of us. Just throw it out there, and we'll throw it onto a list, and we'll get to it. Like I said, like you've seen, and like I said, doesn't have to be hockey related at all. Could be about jerseys. Could be about anything. Could be about life. Whatever. So take it away, Hunter. End of the show. All right. Well, <laughs> that's going to wrap up another episode of the Jersey Nerds podcast. Uh, like people have said, you know, if you need to reach out to us, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, email us, whatever. We're around. Discord. Don't forget to join the Discord. Uh, lots of lots of fun in the Discord. You know, you like Rocket League. We do that every once in a while. If you like yeah. watching people, if you like watching people make Jersey concepts when news breaks, we do that all the time. You know. <laughs> If you uh, if you do like Rocket League and would like to join us, um, we had a team. Uh, our name was Steve in Rocket League, and we have recently announced a name change from Steve to Steve United FC. So, ah uh, yes, Steve United <laughs> FC. I forgot about our, our, name our new uh, Rocket League team is Steve United FC. Did we uh, so. did we cr- did we get a new badge logo to go with it? Preferably, I don't one know that looks if we like ever had one. And- <laughs> did we ever have one? Place types. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but we've uh, yeah. changed the official colors to just blue and white. Jersey Nerds blue and white. So there we go. Unless so if you like Rocket League, another, Discord's uh, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, if you like Rocket League, Discord's where it's at. Um, I mean, there's other stuff too. Like I said, we do design streams every once in a while that's probably a little more up anybody who's listening to this at alley anyway you know like rocket i think league rocket league is kind of just a side branch where we just yeah. happen to do it sometimes yeah. like before this week we hadn't really done it a lot just because i think we were all busy but you know yep yeah, but uh yeah design streams game streams all kinds of stuff yeah. happens in the discord so remember to join uh if you have any concepts send them our way Email, Twitter, Instagram. Those will get put out on Concept Discord's Corners. Discord's another way to submit that to us as well. Yeah, so. same with the mailbag and all that other wonderful stuff that we end up doing on here. So if you got anything, mm-hmm. join the Discord. It's the easiest place. But uh, feel free to reach out on socials and stuff too. And uh, we'll catch you next episode. Mailbag, mailbag, mailbag. <laughs> The Jersey Nerds Podcast is a production of Jersey Nerds Media. The Jersey Nerds are Beepo, Hunter, Justin, Chris, and sometimes Steve. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the underscore Jersey Nerds and hit that link in our bio to find our blog, our Discord channel, our online store, and more. And be sure to rate, comment, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to us. We really appreciate it. From the Jersey Nerds to you... Thanks for just listening to a podcast. How about you?